Sailor and an ocean advocate. Hi Dee, good to meet you. I'm Lee. I'm the founder of Lost Years Rum, which is a new UK rum brand devoted to saving endangered sea turtles. Oh, really nice synergies there. I love that. And our sailors put in the hard miles and when we arrive in port, we want that well-earned drink. Absolutely. And what better drink than rum? Perfect. So Lee, saving endangered sea turtles, tell me more. The, the idea actually for Lost Years Rum was hatched on a family holiday in Jamaica a couple of years ago. Uh, I go out visiting rum distilleries when I'm in that part of the world. So I'd been out for the day and my wife and kids had been back at the resort hearing all about the local sea turtles and how endangered they now are. Um, six out of seven species now are either critically endangered, endangered or threatened. Um, and that night, probably drank too many rums that night, but came up with the idea to combine two things that that part of the world's famous for, great rum and something to, to save sea turtles. And what is it that's actually endangering the sea turtles? Is it pollution and debris? Is it boat and activity? Or is it just the natural biodiversity changing? They face massive challenges on all counts, really. So human consumption is still an issue in Latin America in particular. Um, the shells, tortoise shell as we know it, is still sought after in some parts of the world. And there's an active black market for that. But things like ocean plastic, Global warming now is actually leading to more female turtles being hatched um, than males. So they face a multitude, commercial fishing not least as well. Yeah, they're always a bycatch, aren't they? They just can't swim out the way. And That's I've right. seen firsthand how bad that ocean pollution is and the microplastics that develop as a result. So I talk about it affecting all of us with our food intake and we're all responsible for it, but you know, the creatures there just don't stand a chance. Don't stand a chance, no. And what we're doing, every bottle that we sell saves 10 baby turtles, and the money from the sales goes into community-based conservation. So it gets, goes out to different parts of Latin America and the Caribbean to fund local people going and patrolling those beaches, finding those nests and protecting them and making sure more of those baby turtles get, get to the water and begin their own journey. That's really nice that it's actually going back into the local economy and getting them to be responsible for their local area. So you can have a drink with a conscience. Absolutely. I'm liking this even more. <laughs> and what drink are we going to try first? We're going to try, first of all, we're going to start our journey in the British Virgin Islands, um, famed, of course, for its painkiller cocktail. We're going to do a variant on that called a pain reliever. This is going to take me back. My very first sun sail holiday was in the BVIs on a catamaran, and I just have idyllic memories of that beautiful blue water, anchorages, swimming, cruising bay to bay, and obviously at sunset having that nice rum cocktail at the end. So this is gonna bring back memories. Sounds heavenly. Let's bring on the liquid sunshine. So first up, we have um, a classic from the British Virgin Islands. Uh, the painkiller is traditionally made with Prusser's rum, with very dark rum. Um, so we've done a take on this. We're going to call it the, the, the pain reliever. So it's made with uh, uh, Arabada rum, um, which is a blend of five to eight year old rums from across Latin America. It's named Arabada because um, an Arabada is a mass sea turtle nesting event that you often see in, the, in, in, in Latin America. Hundreds of females come onto the beach and um, nest at the same time. One of nature's great spectacles. Do you know what I believe? I did a race to Costa Rica and I left to do a race back and actually my team then did a visit to a beach and it was the return of the babies into the water. So it must have been after one of those An Arabada. events. There yeah. you go. Oh, the links are all there. So cheers. This, cheers. So this is uh, it's liquid sunshine, really. It's a very tropical drink. It's made with pineapple juice, cream of coconut, orange juice, and of course, the rum. Um, cheers. Smells good. This is it. Memories of BVI holidays now. Delightful. The sun setting, <laughs> the water's blue and flat calm. And you're planning your next day of where you're going to take your floating hotel for your next day's holiday. Sounds perfect. 
We've seen people like David Attenborough shine the spotlight on the plastic problem in our oceans in shows like Blue Planet. Um, have you, what's your experience been? Have you seen that firsthand during your travels? Sadly, yes. I mean, I've done six laps of the planet now and it has got progressively worse. At first I thought I was looking for it because it's very topical, but I took a very young crew. They'd never sailed around the world in my last trip and they all commented on what we were seeing. Polystyrene, food packaging, helium balloons, the bottles, the crates, the fishing nets. And I think when people are pointing it out, you realise it is a problem. Mm -hmm. But the takeaway for me was we did some citizen science and we did the research into microplastic content. And we found microplastics even in the depths of the Southern Ocean. And trust me, there's not a lot of traffic hanging out in the Southern Ocean. So it really was an awareness that this macroplastic that we see is breaking down with waves and UV degradation and becoming microplastics and then being confused as food to the fish and the marine life, which includes your turtles. Yeah, they, it's particularly things like plastic bags, which they can confuse with uh, jellyfish that, that some of them eat, um, all sorts of problems. And microplastics, there was a study a few years ago where 80% of the sea turtles that they surveyed had microplastic inside them. So yeah, it's definitely one of the, the challenges that sea turtles face. And we've all seen that picture on social media of that turtle with the straw and it's nostril. I mean, a harsh reality, Hard hitting. but it's, it's true. And, and that's not even including what they're ingesting. Yeah, it's the wake up call we need when you see visuals like that, isn't it? But, but I think, you know, people, it's topical, people are talking about it and now actually we're starting to see action being made. I mean, one of the things I'm really proud of with Sunsail as a company with global destinations is they're taking on the topic of sustainability and, and it's, a start of a journey and it's a long road to go up which we all know but these companies have a lot of customers they have a lot of reach and we're trying to do the right thing and what sort of things are they doing i mean you know tourism the tourism industry business is often called out for contributing to our environmental issues what are a company like sunsail doing to actually offset that well it, it ranges right from the basics of splitting up your waste so that it goes in the right mm. bins and that's throughout all their bases down to the products being used on a boat that they're environmentally friendly they're biodegradable and so they are permitted to go in the water and if you have the right products on the boat people replace it with the right products and you know that's got to be good for the marine industry as a whole but also repurposing some of their old kit so as sails get worn out rather than just being binned and going mm. to landfill these are being repurposed either locally in the community cut down to sales for local fishermen or repurposed into bags or furniture and they get sales and therefore income from it. So the fact that it's benefiting the local community helps to get that buy-in for that base being set up in that place. But also I think it's really nice, be it an old dinghy that can be repaired and somebody locally can use as a fishing boat. I think it's just a really good way of thinking of that whole life cycle process rather than just our old way of thinking of use and dispose. Absolutely. Well, that sounds like something to raise a glass to. Definitely, small steps, but in the right direction. In the right direction, absolutely. Cheers. Okay, so next off on our journey, D, we're heading towards the Greek islands. Oh, very nice, in the med. This is a, a variation on a classic daiquiri. It's a frozen daiquiri, but made with ouzo. So it's a Greek style daiquiri. Okay. I hope you like it. Oh, surprisingly good. The aniseed. That was better than I thought it was mm. gonna be. So this is made with a, a silver moon rum. It's a, an aged rum or white rum from Barbados and, and Jamaica, uh, but works brilliantly in, in classic cocktails like this. So Dee, for someone who's travelled around the world so many times, it must be hard to pick a favourite place. Well, believe it or not, I feel I've got so much more to see because when I'm sailing, I'm generally sailing past everywhere. I rarely, if at all, stop. So when I think of places like the Med, I think there's so much for me to explore and go and visit all the islands and bays that I've only just touched the surface of it. Fantastic. Do you, do you ever see any sea turtles on your travels around the Med? I have, but it's very rare, but I have on a couple of occasions, but most of my sightings are normally out in the Atlantic in open water. They're much more likely to be seen there, aren't they? Yeah, they're very rare in the Med, but they are there. A lot of people think that the sea turtles are just a, 
a tropics thing or a, a Caribbean thing, but now they're in, in all the oceans. And, and um, they're changing their location now, aren't they? They are. We're seeing the impact of global warming there. So only a few months ago now, there was a report of a nesting site in North, North Italy, which is the northernmost point they've ever recorded sea turtle nesting. So okay. we're beginning to see that creep up and those changes again begin to have an impact on them. So I've done a little bit of racing in Italy, but I've also done a holiday with Sunsour in Croatia, which blew my mind, all the islands and bays there to visit as always. But I know that in Dubrovnik, they've got sea bins in their marina. So collecting the rubbish that gets caught in the, in the corners of uh, the marina, the pontoons and the dock and that there. So I think they're going to increase that number. And it's a great kind of bit of technology that's actually helping us clean up our waters and where our boats are kept and therefore having a knock-on effect on our turtles that are visiting. That's a good news story for sure. And I, I know the Croatian government have done a lot to protect sea turtles as well. Um, loggerheads actually are, are quite um, well known in that part of the world. So one of the endangered species. Well, let's toast to the silver moon rum and the Absolutely. loggerhead turtles. Cheers. Cheers. Next up, we have a classic rum punch. Um, rum punch, of course, and the Caribbean go hand in hand. And this one's made with our Navy strength rum. Now, as an honorary commander of the Royal Navy, I'm sure you know what that's all about. Indeed. But it's 54.5%, uh, so this is bottled at true Navy strength. And that was one of the things that came out of the, the long relationship between rum and the British Navy over many, many hundreds of years. Uh, you'll know that the, the so-called rum top, the daily ration of rum, was given to sailors from the mid-1700s right until the point it was stopped in 1970, uh, when we got a little bit more conscious of health and maybe a daily rum isn't a good thing. Um, but one of the things they also gave us was this bottling strength, 54.5%. So stronger than most, it makes me a little bit nervous about trying this, but... See what you think. Reminds me of the Caribbean already. Cheers. Cheers. Now I'm advised that this has medicinal qualities. So the rum punch was originally given to sailors as a way of um, preventing scurvy on their long journeys, long vo voyages back to Europe. Well, it's quite funny because sailors are known, or well, historically known for getting diabetes. And I don't think it's the rum. I think it's the mixers that they had it with, whether it was with Coca-Cola or all the juices having those extra sugars that gave them the diabetes, but there's... Uh... Absolutely. And you'll be glad to hear that all of our rums, including this one, have got no added sugar, no flavouring, no colour. They're just pure, unadulterated rums. So you add and that's all the Absolutely. sugar you're getting. Mix it with whatever you like, be that Coke or, in this case, fruit juices, whatever's to your taste. So, Dee, where did your, where did your love affair with the ocean and sailing start? Well, unlike most professional sailors, I didn't grow up in dinghies and build my experience that way. I was a school teacher for five years and loved my job, but it was like the right job too soon. And my first experience of sailing was at university. And it was obviously planting a seed in the back of my mind. And uh, I decided after five years of teaching that I was going to retrain and enter the world of water sports and invariably sailing, much to my mother's dismay. But now I reassured her that I could always go back to teaching and now my entry back into schools is to go and talk to the children or inspire the teachers and uh, plant the seed and let, walk away quickly before I have any <laughs> responsibility. But I, I really enjoyed the journey of learning a challenging environment that no two days are ever the same. Mother Nature is definitely in charge and the reason we keep going back out there is because you're always tested. Something's going to be different, something's going to change and you have to be over everything. It's not just one job and everybody else does other jobs. You literally have to have each other's backs and be able mm. to do multiple roles within a boat uh, to operate. So it's a, a really enjoyable pastime. Obviously, I've taken it to a professional level, but you can start at any age and any time. What about you? Any sailing experience? I've not got any as yet, but actually I've signed up to do my RYA, is it? Yeah, that's right. Royal Yachting Association numbers one and two next year. 
So I celebrated my 50th recently, and this is my decade of experience. So I thought I'd start by learning to sail and hopefully do something with that. Perfect, but because that's exactly right for the sport. It has no gender boundaries, it has no age boundaries. It is for everybody. And the nice thing is that little bit of experience and confidence that course is gonna give you will allow you to maybe go on a sun south holiday at one of the varied destinations around the world. And you can choose where you then go and have that experience. And you don't have to have all the confidence because you can, you, you're not left alone. Mm -hmm. You can go on a flotilla, you can have a skipper, you can be part of a boat that does more training. There's, you know, the options are, are boundless. And then when you get to that point where you're comfortable, then you can take a bare boat and do exactly what you want when you want. That sounds incredible. So where, can, where can I sign up? Yeah, here's to your sailing experience Cheers. and good luck with it all. Enjoy. Our final stopping point is Thailand by, by way of California and the Caribbean. Um, so this is a take on a classic Mai Tai, but with a Thai, Thailand twist. So we've got Thai coconut cream in here uh, and also a Thai chili pepper to give it that extra kick. It's made with our four island rum, which comes from four islands in, in the Caribbean. Um, hope you like it. Chili pepper on top makes me nervous, but I'll try anything. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Very different. You taste a fiery kick in the background there? A little peppery in the background. Yes, my notes in the back of my throat are, oh, yes. So sailing's always struck me as quite a relaxing way to travel. Is that the case? Is it good for you, for your well-being, mental and physical? It can be relaxing, but I'll be lying to you if I said it was all sunshine and rum cocktails along the way. <laughs> because we're at the mercy of mother nature and she certainly can throw a curveball every now and again. And it doesn't matter how beautiful the destinations, even in the shores of Thailand, you can get the monsoons and the waves. So you need to get the weather right. But as a sport and an environment to put yourself in, it's fantastic. You're out in the open air, you're breathing in the oxygen, you've got the wind in your hair, you've got the water on your feet, and it's just a beautiful way to be that just almost presses pause on our everyday life mm. that's running at a million miles an hour. And the focus is on very different things. You're focusing on the wind in your sails and the motion of the waves as you drive the boat. It sounds quite romantic and it can be, it and it is. And it, it's all that hard work that builds, you know, that open air, the fresh air builds up an appetite, but you're on holiday or you're enjoying yourself. You are allowed to enjoy it. And so you can eat what you want. And at the end of the day, you've earned that rum cocktail at the end. So. It's all that effort that's worth it, but it's, it's an environment that I love being in and I choose to challenge myself in it, but it's also one of those environments that people can tune to switch off. It's almost like a little bit of meditation, that whole kind of taking a little retreat, taking a little me time, sailing can offer just that. Sounds idyllic. I guess you just have to make sure you drop anchor before having too many of these. That's right, it's all in moderation and it's all in the right order. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.